Hello, Grand Forks violists. Uh, my name is Jonah Sirota, and uh, I actually used to live in Grand Forks for a couple of years. I was in the Chiara String Quartet, and we were in residence there uh, from 2000 to 2002, and uh, still miss miss uh, being there, miss you guys. It's, it was a great place to live. Um, now I live in Los Angeles, California, and uh, I actually work as a violist making recordings for movies and TV soundtracks. Um, and I'm also a composer writing music for that kind of stuff, uh, as well as pieces that people play uh, in, in concerts and other performances. Um, so I wanted to actually help you guys today with the Isabel Nimrod variation uh, from the Elgar that I know you guys are working on for your Allstate audition. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how to prepare an excerpt like this. When you're preparing an orchestra audition, you've got to think about whatever excerpt you're playing and what it's showing to the jury. So instead of thinking about, you know, are you a good enough player to, for them to like you, you wanna think instead, what does this excerpt show and how can I show that I can uh, play this excerpt with the elements that are needed uh, to make it useful to the director, or the conductor of the orchestra. Um, so in the case of the Isabel excerpt, there's a couple things that they're checking for. One of them is, and primary always with excerpts, is rhythm. Are you steady in your rhythm? Can you play a slow tempo rhythm without uh, speeding up or skipping over important material? And secondly is going to be the beauty of your sound. You have a chance here to show off your legato sound um, and really practice getting a sound that's gonna be gorgeous uh, even in a slow tempo. Um, and then finally, this is a great opportunity to show off phrasing and direction. Um, now in this solo, it's not labeled here, uh, actually, I guess it is, but you'll notice that uh, before rehearsal 21, what was a group uh, part splits off into a solo part. And so while you're playing this, you also have to keep that in mind, that your sound should change as if you're playing a solo now, not just blending in with the section. So I'm going to show you a little bit how I would go about working on this, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, stuff to keep in mind as you're getting uh, ready to perform it. First of all, I've got my metronome here. I actually have a combination metronome tuner, um, and I often, while I'm working on excerpts, see it's tuning my voice, <laughs> often will have them both on at the same time um, because uh, I don't obsessively check the tuner, but it's always good to know, am I pretty close? Um, and in this case, half note equals 48, so we're gonna set it to that. And while I'm first learning it, I'm gonna kind of use the metronome every time. Now, when I'm using the metronome, doesn't mean that I'm not gonna play musically. It doesn't mean that it's gonna be like a, like, a, like a machine. I can actually try to be expressive with the beat. So I'm gonna set my metronome on to 48 to begin with. Here, just learning how this tempo feels and learning how long it takes uh, to get through these phrases in the right tempo. And I'm gonna let it count right through the rest. I'm not gonna jump ahead. This is really important. It's one of the biggest mistakes that those of us who sit on committees to listen to student auditions here, which is that students often think that they're playing the rests for the right amount of time, but don't. It's the easiest way to get to, to, to say, no, oh, they, don't, they don't count. And it's the simplest thing you can do actually to make sure you get out ahead of that. So we're gonna get the metronome going here. So that might be the first time through. Now, now that you all have uh, these great, stop that. Now that you guys have uh, iPhones or other phones or other kinds of uh, computers or other electronic devices with recording capability, it's so easy to just stick the phone on and record yourself. And I really recommend you do that. So the other thing that I like to do is actually test myself uh, by playing it without a metronome and then play it back 
and put the metronome on at the tempo you can if your metronome lets you adjust just kind of adjust till you're at exactly the same tempo that'll let you figure out are you playing in the tempo you thought but it will also help you to know once you get that tempo going are you pushing and pulling against it everyone does a little bit so you're going to find that you have to adjust a little bit but if you find that you're speeding up a lot somewhere or slowing down a lot you'll figure that out really quickly so what i might do next is put the metronome on for a moment and imagine the first phrase and then play without the metronome after that. And I would go through like that and then I would listen to the recording, have the metronome there so I can be sure that I'm getting it as close as possible. So um, another element that they're gonna be listening for is your sustain, your beauty of sound. And with this particular excerpt, one of the things you really wanna think about is where in the bow do you need to be at all times? Uh, these bowings are pretty good and the fingerings are as well. They really help out as far as supporting bow distribution, but you've gotta actually be planned ahead. If you're starting at the frog with two short notes, that that first long note on beat two of the first measure is going to be a down bow all the way almost to the tip. That means you're starting the second measure at the tip and that those two shorter notes are gonna be at the tip and then you come back. So it really is gonna be like a little bit of, of movement and then a, a whole bow, a little bit, and then a whole bow back. Um, and then of course, when the sound changes going into the solo at rehearsal 21, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have enough bow to sustain the top of that hairpin on beat three of that measure. Uh, a couple other things to think about. Um, your sound can be quite different in the solo part. It's molto cantabile, which means very sung, very beautiful, but it also doesn't need to fit into a group sound, so it can have a little bit more soloistic vibrato and bow usage. Finally, um, as you're preparing for this, remember that practice makes perfect you have to practice not just the excerpt itself, but practice performing it, practice recording it and listening back while you're playing for somebody and see what your tendencies are. In my experience, it always feels really good uh, once I got it learned, but I'm, I was always shocked um, by how much, uh, when I would listen back to my recordings, how much problem there was with pitch or with um, steadiness with the rhythm or with consistency of sound. And it's really only in going through over and over confronting that, being like, yeah, that's not sounding quite as good as I thought, and making those adjustments that it really gets good. So all of us at every level uh, and every level of experience still have to do that um, in order to really understand how we sound and get us to where we can be. Um, there may not be any such thing as a perfect performance of these, but if you keep doing that, you'll get as close as possible. And I know you guys are gonna do great work. Uh, in the meanwhile, as we're all locked down, uh, I wish you guys a good winter and I hope that um, you have some fun with this and make sure to stay in touch with each other and uh, reach out to me if you uh, have any questions. Thanks so much and I hope you guys enjoy. Take care.